Langsam, langsam. Hier kommt doch früh genug dran. Fatima! Verbitter mir diesen sinnlosen Hoheiten. Benehmen Sie sich anständig. Abtreten! Free be seated, Captain Thorndyke. just walked up to this house in a normal way, instead of, uh, you would have been invited to lunch by our Führer. I've anticipated the pleasure of meeting you for years. I'm afraid I don't know. Well, like you, my dear Thorndike, I had but one passion in life, and that is the hunting of big game. I'm convinced that I would have become more famous even than yourself if I hadn't renounced it in favor of politics. Yes, I uh, find it a more exciting field of action. My branch of it. You're surprised that I know your name so well. I was in Nairobi on my own safari the year that all Kenya rang with your exploits. So you see, it's quite natural that I should know who you are. Yes. And also, you've taken uh, my passport. Nonetheless, my dear Thorndike, I should have recognized you on sight. A man whose brother was a guest in this house only last September. Do you know my brother? When Lord Risborough was sent here by your Prime Minister on a mission of appeasement. I found him a credulous simpleton. Do you know, Thorndyke, that this is the most closely guarded house in the world? Rather. I would have staked my life that no living thing could have entered this area without being seen. But then, of course, we didn't count upon a creature that has learned to stalk the most cunning animal, that can catch scents upon the wind, and has mastered the trick of moving through a forest as if he were transparent. Look out there. For 500 yards, not a tree, not a shrub, a man running towards this house would be cut down before he'd taken five steps. And yet, on that ledge above, was a man with a precision rifle and a high degree of intelligence and skill that is required to use it. Your judgment of distance is uncanny, Thorndike. The sights were set at 550 yards, only 10 feet short of the exact range. I checked it. Obviously, my dear Thorndike, such a man cannot be allowed to live. Surely you don't think I'm an assassin. You were stopped before you could shoot. But I could have easily. Good heavens, man, I never intended to shoot. I merely wanted to find out if it were possible. That was the excitement of it, the danger, the fun. It was that fellow jumping me that made my gun go off. You disappoint me, Thorndyke. I dare say I have been a bit thick, but, well, from the way you talked about hunting and all that, I assumed you knew it was a sporting stock. A what? A sporting stock, stocking the game you're after for the fun of it, not to kill. Oh, I'm not begging off from any consequences, but you will permit me to doubt your claims as a hunter of big game if you fail to understand the fascination for a man who's hunted all commoner game of hunting the biggest game on Earth. That's it, precisely. The most dangerous of all animals, man. But you don't kill. The sport is in the chase, not the kill. I don't kill any longer, not even small game. I know what I can do with a rifle. If I can stalk an animal and get within range, the rest is a mathematical certainty. And that's sheer cruelty, and I don't like cruelty. The real fun is matching my wits against the instinct of an animal that isn't going to let me get near enough to shoot. Your conversation fascinates me, Thorndyke. But this softness in your nature with regard to the ultimate purpose of firearms betrays the weakness the decadence, not only of yourself, but of your entire race. Yes, you're symbolic of the English race. I'm beginning to think that you're symbolic of yours. We Nazis are finding a new life, a new vitality for our people by returning to the primitive virtues. Such as going back to the barbarism of decapitation? We do not hesitate to destroy in order to create a new world. 
God help it. I'm sorry for you. And I for you, Thorndyke. You and your world. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. You can leave this country a free man. You can return to your position and friends in spite of what you've done. On what condition? Your name signed to this. Later, it will be witnessed by the Chief of Secret Police and other officials. What is it, uh... Suicide note. It is a confession that on this 29th day of July, 1939, you have attempted to assassinate our Fuhrer, and that you have undertaken this crime with the approval of your government. I what? That you have acted as an assassin for the British government. I can't believe you're serious. Do you expect me to sign a lie? You still insist you had no intention to shoot? Of course, I told you it was a sporting star. Then why didn't you leave your rifle behind? Uh, I've asked myself that. And I think the answer is that... that it wouldn't have been sporting. It wouldn't have been playing the game. Nothing betrays the hypocrisy of the English more than their use of that phrase, playing the game. One plays a game to win, Thorndyke. Nonsense. I don't expect you to understand. Even pulling the trigger on an empty gun was a... Oh, uh, kind of cheating with myself. It, it didn't prove anything. I did, you know. Oh, naturally. It had to be a loaded rifle with my finger on the trigger. With only my individual will, my civilized conscience, between me and the extermination of your strutting little Caesar. Thorndike. I mean no insult, but how do you expect me to describe a man who wants to play God and have everyone else in the world run around and say, Heil Hitler. Thorndike, I warn you. Will you sign this document? You are in no position to refuse. That's for me to decide, isn't it? You're thinking it is easy to throw away your life. Yes, it is. But uh, how well do you stand pain? If you won't listen to me, you'll have to talk it over with these men. I would save you from their persuasion. Very well. Ignat. You've been able to think, Fangenland. 